Hello, this is Tyler White. Today we're going to talk to you a little bit about water procurement. Now, everyone knows you can boil water to make it healthy. Everyone knows how to boil water. But I'm going to do that today and take it to the next level. Step it up a notch. So stick with me. grab some water from the creek right over here it's a freshwater creek it's still got some nasties in it and we're gonna boil it but what I'm gonna do in order to add to the water and to illustrate a point is this I've got some ephedra that I've collected walked up on the mountain and grabbed a little bit of ephedra I've got some mint that was right over there by the side of the river and I've got a little bit of pine needles from pinion pine I tried to grab the green stuff right at the tip. It ends up being a little bit more juicy, a little more palatable, a little less bitter. And I'm gonna add all that together, crushed into a tea. What this is gonna do is it's gonna lift my spirits and make me a little more happy than just grab water, boil water, drink, okay? So it's also gonna add vitamin C, it's gonna add minerals, it's gonna add things that I wouldn't get from animals, things that I, I wouldn't have if I weren't doing it this way. All right, so let's go grab some water from the river, get a little fire made, start boiling, and add some stuff to our tea. Got a little stream here. Nice, beautiful stream. You can see it's clear, but there's still a couple chunkies in there. A couple little strangers, right? Also, I'm sure there's possible cryptosporidium and other things in there that I can't see, and that's why we're going to have to boil this. With this ephedra, a little bit goes a long way. Smash it up real good. The juice is out of it. It's a little bit bitter. Then the pine needles do the same thing. I don't have a lot of pine needles. So I can definitely put more in. But if you smash it up real good, a little bit goes a long way. Oh, totally missed. And lastly, the mint. The mint you can just kind of crush with your fingers, grind it up, and again, a little goes a long way. The ephedra or the brigantine, whew, that's some strong mint, that's some good stuff. The ephedra or the brigantine, about a pinch is all you need if you're grinding that stuff up. If you just pull a handful off and cook it, it'll work, but you won't get as much out of it, and you're kind of wasting. So smash it up. Squish it between two rocks, two logs, whatever, and again, just a little bit. Um, the, the caution with the ephedra tea is it's, it's a stimulant like caffeine. Do not mix it with caffeine. Uh, that, that can be bad for you. But if you need energy, it'll give you temporary energy. It'll make you thirsty. It's an astringent. It'll make you a little less hungry. So it can help, but it can hurt. So use it wisely and don't use it too much. All right, I've added all three of the ephedra mint and 
um, pine needle to my tea. Now I gotta make a fire and cook this stuff. So I'm gonna put my lid back in my pot so that I don't go putting ash or anything into my pot. And we'll stick that off to the side. I also have this other one here because I want to show you how to cook out of both. Anybody can cook out of, pot, out of a pot, but not a lot of people know how to cook out of a canteen like this. I've got normal water in it. Got water river water in that one. But the reason why I'm showing you this is a lot of people don't know how to deal with it once it gets hot. So let's check that out. First, we need a little bit of a fire lay. All I'm really looking to do right here is to aerate it, take small chunks off. Once I've got these little chunks, I can use them to start a fire easier. I don't need a big fire, I don't need a lot of wood. I need just enough to cook with. So, I'm just using these little pieces. Ideally for cooking wood, you can have an ember or a spark, that's what starts your fire. You're going to have your nesting material or your tinder, which that turns it from a ember to flame. You're going to have kindling, which is this, plus I'm going to put some feather sticks on it. And then you're going to have your cooking logs. Your cooking logs don't need to be bigger than your forearm, the diameter and length of your forearm. If they're much bigger than that, it's going to take a while for it to turn into coals. It's going to just heat too much. It's not going to burn pure. The idea is to have ash when you're done, not have logs or chunks that smolder and cook forever. So process, process the stuff down small enough to get what you need and it's, it's less wasteful, leaves less big fires, helps you cook quicker and more efficiently, helps your fire to be totally out when you're done, and that alone should make it worth its weight in gold. Okay, I got enough little shavings. I'm gonna throw a couple feather sticks on these guys. Got another video, talks about kindling and feather sticks. All you're doing is creating extra surface area so that when the fire takes off, it'll grip and it will hold all those little dudes right there. Okay. Now, when I make a fire, I'd like to have two dog legs and then a shelf. Okay. Or I will cup them, put this in the back like this. Here's my shelf. And it essentially gives us oxygen to flow underneath and a place to put my bundle when I'm done. Then I'll put a couple of curly feather sticks right on the sides. And that'll grab the fire and hold it. And then give me a little bit of a platform to cook my stuff on once the fire's rip roaring. Also helps to have a nice and sharp knife. Okay, I've created my fire lay. Got all my parts in there. Got a nice platform that I can use once we have the fire going. I have my nesting material right here. Get some really fine stuff. That will hold on to my bundle. So once I create an ember, I'm good to go. Put that right there. Now I'm gonna bust a coal. The way I'm gonna do that is I've got some uh, goldenrod spindle on a cottonwood root hearth board. And I have a little fat wood in here I can use. I don't think you really need it. 
but I'll show you how to use it while I've got it. What I like to do is just to pull off a couple of little feather sticks. Just pull off little pieces here. And I, were, I, I, I call these extenders. Essentially, it's going to get, once the fire gets going, it's going to extend its ability to retain by putting those inside of that feather stick bundle. And they're not a lot. It's just enough to grip that fire. It's like little baby candles on the inside of it. Because this thing can be used to, to light many fires instead of one if I take the shavings off of it. Okay. Do not have any new holes. So, Matt Graham showed me this. Clear your space here, okay? Put your hearthboard under two big logs and go to town. It kind of blew my mind when I saw it the first time because it's so simple that I wish I would have figured it out long ago. And it just gives you the ability to better control your hearthboard without having to use your foot. And that helps you to breathe a little bit better while you're running your hand drill. He doesn't know he taught me this. I just watched him do it when I was filming with him a few years ago. Okay. I put a little bit of sand on there to start up the process. It's already starting to coal. I have a quick little burn in. And now I have what I need from that. Let's switch these rocks because that's a shorter rock. Cutting my notch in my hurt board. It's gonna be one eighth of a pie just short of the center. And that's just big enough that I can get the material out, but not so big that my spindle falls out while I'm uh, trying to run the thing. That is one eighth of a, a pie, just short of the center. And I cut a little grooves right here along the base of it right there so that they can um, get a little oxygen in the bottom of it. I'm only gonna use about that much of the hole anyway. Sometimes you can get two fires out of it, usually just one. Just bust the coal. a little coal, gonna pump that, get a little oxygen in there.
see that kind of cup set. Those twigs are catching on fire. A bigger stick here so it holds up. Give a little oxygen in there. We'll get that up to a little bit more of a coal level. Throw the water on there and start boiling. Okay, I made a little friction fire. Got some coals going. It's not big old huge flames. They're gonna singe my eyebrows off my face. So what I'm gonna do is that same little pocket that I threw my nesting material into, I'm gonna put my pot right down inside of that before I get moving too quick. Grab one of these sticks, kind of flatten that out a little bit, get some good coals in there, and it will kind of be surrounded a little bit by flame. And then push this forward so there's no heat really coming up on my handle. It's just heat around the pot right here. Need the oxygen still. It's not that I want the open flame, it's that I need to make sure this water is boiled well enough to kill pathogens before I drink it. And one thing to take in mind and take into account is altitude. The higher you go in altitude, the less air pressure, the more it is expanded. Because there's less pressure pushing down on the water, water boils at a different temperature at altitude than it does down at sea level. So when you're at lower altitudes, you bring it to a boil and you're good. When you're at really higher altitudes, like really high altitudes, you should really get a sun flare, which is just this little thing you put in the water and you let it boil. The, the wax or whatever it is on the inside of it will melt at the same temperature you need the water to be to kill pathogens and then it slides to the other side of the tube. If that hasn't happened, it's not melted, it hasn't reached the right temperature. But where I know that I'm at a low enough altitude right now that that doesn't matter, I'm just going to boil the water and go from there. So keep in mind that is an issue that you need to watch out for, but it's not something I'm worried about today. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do while that's cooking is show you how to cook with one of these. Now I've got good water in this already. But what happens if I have river water, which I wouldn't drink of course, and then I put it in the flames, okay? When this thing gets hot, I'm not gonna be able to touch it. So, and obviously I'm not leaving the lid on there because the lid's plastic. So, let me cook this for a second. When this gets up to a boil, we'll come back to it. And I'll show you how to deal with a hot container when you don't have a glove or a hook or anything to grab a hold of it with. All right, so it's been cooking for a while. Let's check it out and show you what that looks like. Right there, just not too hot. We have boiling water, all right? So we know that it's, it's, it's warm and that dark color we have right there, that dark color shows us that the ephedra bark has bled out into the water. And it's good to go, good to drink. So now I'm gonna let that shut for a minute, let it cook a little bit longer. Get the rest of that out of there and let's talk about this guy. This should seem kind of simple. I didn't think of it up front, but what do you do when you're dealing with a single walled clean canteen type thing that you're cooking and you need to pull it off the water or off, off the, the fire? Well, I usually have a bandana or a schmog or another piece of cloth with me. And what I will do is I will just turn it in like this so that I'm not dipping these bottom pieces into the fire. Grab a hold of it, set it where I need to set it, and let it cool. Now I know that's not a super complicated trick, but it's things like these that I know people watch these videos for. So if you've been cooking a single walled canteen, or maybe you busted the handle off of your pot, I don't know, you're dealing with, with that kind of an issue, just roll that shimog over, you got some pad, grip it, move it, set it down, pull your canteen, or your your uh, do-rag, your handkerchief off your head, grab it sideways, sit it down, and, and, and cool it off. So now that this has been done cooking, we're gonna pull it off, 
and I'm not gonna drink boiling water. So I'm gonna let this sit and air out for a little bit. And as cool, soon as it cools down, we're gonna taste this. Sit it right here on the ground. If you wanna cool something off, especially in a cooler climate or in the winter, if you put it directly on the ground, that um, the heat transfer will go straight into the ground and it will cool it off substantially quicker. If you wanna keep stuff warm, keep them on a flat walk, rock that's been warmed by the fire. And you know, it's a little tip or trick that you can keep your food warm or cool it down depending on what state you need the food to be in. It's taste testing time. Let's see how that tea went. Let it cool off a bit so I can touch it. You can see it's kind of a dark color. That is the ephedra in the water. Um, Brigham tea. Also, it's got a smell. I wish I could, I really wish I could give you the smells and the taste of things. Like, there's just some stuff you can't get without going into the field. Then this is one of them. It's got a wood, like a bark smell, only it's a, it's a familiar smell to me. It's an ephedra smell. Now, ephedra is bitter. What you can do is add honey, add berries, add something sweet. This mint that I added in here should be able to tame that bitter taste. And pine tastes like pine smells, so it's not super shocking. Um, the green tips are a little softer on the taste, but that's all that you're going to get out of this. So. That's good. It's still warm. It's like hot cocoa warm. Let's think about what this has given me, other than it tastes good. This has given me water, okay? Instead of just boiling water and gagging it down, this has given me water that tastes good, water that has vitamins. <clears throat> In the case of the ephedra, it's gonna give me, or the Brigham tea, it's giving me energy. And that, that mint has a lot of uh, uh, trace minerals, so there's, you know, different stuff I'm getting there. So this is like a vitamin cocktail of energy in, con in conjunction with water that I got straight from the river and the side of the mountain and all the area right here. So instead of just boiling water and drinking it next time, find some wild edibles, add it to it, create a stew with a rabbit, something, and do that in conjunction with your other amounts of water. You'll be able to take down twice as much water and camel up before you move across the desert You'll feel better, you'll function better, your brain will work better as you move out into the desert. So, keep that in mind next time. I hope this was valuable to you. This has been Boiling Water into a Tea by Tyler White. And if you like this, check out the other videos on this channel. There's a bunch of survival related videos. There's a deep, deep well of knowledge. There are so many people on this channel that are experts in other areas that I, I will never even be able to get into, so check that out. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I'm gonna drink my tea. Still pretty toasty. It's really good. When I get done with this, I just put the leftover chunks of wood in the, in the fire and wash it out. That's really good.